thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. We honor you for this blessed and glorious day. We give you thanks. We give you praise, Heavenly Father. Lord, as we study to show thyself approved unto you, Lord, and we rightly divide your word of truth, may our eyes of understanding be enlightened, that we may come to the knowledge of truth, Lord. I declare that veils are falling off as we preach your word of grace, O God. Every scale is being removed in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare that everybody under the sound of my voice, Lord, meet them at their point of need. Whatever it is that they desire, Lord, you have said it in your way that you will give us the desires of our hearts. And I declare that the message of Christ, the message of his finished work will be heard all over the world in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare that many will come to repentance, Lord, through your word in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift, the promise, the Holy Spirit that resides in us. Father, we declare that we are what the word says we are. We have what the word says we have. And indeed, we can do what the word says we can do. Everything that our Heavenly Father did not plant, let it be uprooted in the name of Jesus. As your word of grace comes to us, O oh God, this afternoon, let everything that you did not plant be uprooted. Every sickness be uprooted in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We give you thanks. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Let your name be exalted throughout the nations. In the name of Jesus, let the nations come to the knowledge of truth, Lord, through the word of your grace, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We honor you for this blessed and glorious day. I thank you for everybody that is under the sound of my voice. And I declare and I decree, Lord, that their eyes of understanding are being enlightened. They are coming to the knowledge of truth. Father, we thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Ah, Sissy, it is good to see you. Praise God. Daisy, it is good to see you. Florence, it is good to see you. Praise God forevermore. Like I said, I don't want to take much of your time. We want to get straight into it. Praise God. And you know, you are aware that we are preparing for the Jesus tour. Um, I think by later on this afternoon, oh, yeah, you will all have the address. And please make sure that you... You share that with your family members that are in cities like Liverpool, Manchester, you know, um, all the cities that are close by. And uh, if those that are in London, you want to travel, please travel. But be found in, in Liverpool for the Jesus tour. Praise God. Glory to God. I'm excited. Right, like I said, I don't want to take much of your time. We want to get straight into it. Second Timothy. So make sure you've got your notebooks, Bibles, notepads, wherever you write notes, because I'll be giving quite a lot of scripture because it is good for your spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. Right. Let's get straight into it. Second Timothy chapter three. Today is, is going to be punishment of the devil after punishment. <laughs> As we are preparing for the Jesus tour, it's punishment after punishment. So if you are here, you are not ready to hear the punishment. Hey, I pl please stay. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter number three, verse number 15. This is Paul writing to his uh, son in the Lord, Timothy. And he says, and how from a child you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, the Hagios Graphe which are able to make thee wise for salvation. Meaning that the writings of the scriptures, they are only profitable in regards to salvation. Meaning salvation is faith in Christ Jesus. Now, look at this. Today, I really want to punish the devil. And how that from a childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make thee wise for salvation, through faith in Christ Jesus. So salvation is faith in Christ Jesus. Salvation is not in faith in anything else except Christ Jesus. Verse number 16. All scripture is breathed out by God and it's profitable. Ophilimos. It is profitable, meaning it is ophilimos. It is advantageous within the parameters of salvation. The scriptures, they are they that testify of Jesus. Number one, you have to understand this. 
The scriptures are advantageous of Philemos in the subject matter of salvation. The scriptures will not benefit you in business. The scriptures will not benefit you in agriculture. The scriptures will not benefit you in science. But the scriptures, they are advantageous in the subject matter of salvation. Or oh, Philemos in the original, advantageous within the parameters of salvation. So the writings of this, when we're talking about the scriptures, we're talking about Genesis to Malachi. So the scriptures, when they are properly used within the parameters of salvation, they are ophilimos, advantageous to you. Now watch this. He says, um, all scripture is breathed out by God and it's profitable for what? Number one, it's profitable for teaching, that is doctrine. The scriptures are profitable for doctrine, number one. For reproof, that word reproof in the original is evidence. That's why he says in Hebrew, he says, um, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence reproof. So the scriptures, they bring us to a place of reproof. Evidence, 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 evidence. The scriptures, reproof evidence for correction so the scriptures they are there that may that will correct you so if you don't want to be corrected yeah, there's a problem there correction and for training in righteousness that the man of god may be complete equipped for every good work so Salvation is faith in Christ Jesus. And the scriptures, they are profitable or philemos or advantageous in the subject matter of salvation. That's why the Bible would say in the book of John chapter 5 verse 39, You search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life but the scriptures they are there that testify of me that means the reason of the writings the reason of the scriptures is a person so the scriptures are not there to teach you about business the scriptures are not there to teach you about motivation the scriptures are not there to teach you about agriculture but the scriptures they are there that testify of a person so the writings, all the writings that you see from Genesis to Revelation, they are a pointer to a person. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but the scriptures, they rally behind me. I am the reason of the scriptures. I am the reason of the writings of Moses. I am the, written, the reason of the writings of the prophets. I am the reason of the writings of the Psalms. Whether they used metaphors, shadows, types to communicate me, it is I that they were talking about. When Moses could not say Jesus in the Old Testament, he could not say Jesus, he would say the brazen serpent. If you would look into the brazen serpent, you will leave. That brazen serpent, it was Jesus being communicated in typology. Remember that the Bible is a Christocentric book with a Christocentric message. And the theology of the Bible is soteriology, salvation. The Bible is not a book of anything else except salvation. So when the Bible, when Paul is writing to his protege, Timothy, when he says that thou from a child you have been acquainted to sacred writings, they are able to make thee wise in the subject matter of salvation. They are profitable of philemos in the subject matter of salvation. So the Bible is a book of salvation. It's not a book of agriculture. It's not a book of uh, business the fact that there were shadows and symbols and parables that were used to communicate Christ, whether it was a parable of the sower, parable of this, all those parables are not parables for money or for business. They are communicating Christ because 
You search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, but the scriptures, they are they that speak of me. I am the reason of the scriptures. Jesus, I want you to understand something. Oh, God help me. Before we get there, go to Galatians. Go to Galatians. Mapu David, it is good to see you. Yvonne, it is good to see you. God bless you. It's about time. It's about time. Praise God. Now watch this. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter number 3. Today is punishment after punishment. Back to back. Punishment of the devil. <laughs> back to back. Uh, as we are preparing the Jesus tour. Okay. Today is back to back punishment. Galatians chapter 3 verse number 1 to 3. Praise God. The Bible says, this is Paul writing to the church in Galatia. And he says, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Watch this. That word foolish. Foolish is not an insult. It's their state. He said, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? That means the bewitching is no longer happening in your village or in wherever. The bewitching is happening on the pulpit. The bewitching is happening with pastors. It's the pastors that are bewitching you. I did not say that. You have a problem. Deal with Paul. He is the one saying, Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? That means there is a bewitching that is taking place within the body of Christ. Preachers are bewitching people. On pulpits. Wearing suits. Now, let's find out the bewitching. Okay, stay there. Today is back-to-back -back punishment of the devil. The devil is a liar. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. You saw this, that Jesus. How did you believe the gospel? When you believed in the death, the burial, and the resurrection. So that means you, were, you, you knew that it was through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. But now you have been bewitched. That's why you are foolish. Not an insult, but a state. Watch this. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Remember the Bible says... Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. So now these Galatians, they had a pastor that bewitched them that began now to tell them that you have to do this for God to do that. That is where the bewitching took place. So he says, are you that foolish that you began in the spirit? You began in the spirit. Now you are being perfected in the flesh. He's saying, oh God, help me, help me. I, I really need to punish the devil. He says, let me ask you only this. Verse number two of Galatians three, verse number two. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by the hearing with faith? How did you receive the spirit? Did you sow a seed to receive the spirit? No. You received the spirit by faith upon believing in the finished work. Now he goes on to say, now because you are bewitched, this is what, you are, this is, what is happening. You are so foolish that having begun by the spirit, you are now being perfected by the flesh. You began by the spirit. You received the spirit. You were born again. By the Spirit. Now you want to be perfected by the flesh. You are foolish. Listen. Jesus. Is more than enough. You begin in the Spirit. Now you are being. Ah, Zaka. No. Watch this. Watch this. Let me, let me bring you, let me bring something back to you here. Let's look at the pretext before I say what I want to say. Mm. That you begin in the spirit. Now you are being perfected by the flesh. 
Pastor Mchangwa, it is good to see you, woman of God. I love you so dearly. Praise God. Now look at the pretext. Ah, I was looking for you last Sunday. Kana, it is good to see you. God bless you. God bless you. As the Spirit leads, I will speak to you. As the Spirit leads. Galatians chapter 1 verse number 6. Let's look at the pretext. Galatians chapter 1 verse number 6. Let's look at the pretext. God punished the devil today. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and turning to a different gospel. This is Paul again in the church in Galatia because they were bewitched. He said, now I am astonished. How is it that you are quickly deserting him, not it? Him, not it. John chapter 1 verse 45. And Philip findeth Nathaniel and said, we have found him, not it. We have found him. Oh, let's, let's go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1 verse 45. I want to show you something and I want to punish the devil. Today is back to back punishment. Now watch this. John chapter 1 verse 45. Philip find Nathaniel and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. That means they had been looking for him. They had been looking. For them to say we have found him, that means they were looking. But now, watch this. He is saying, we, we have found him of whom? So there is a him that has to be found. It's not an it. It's him. So Philip findeth Nathaniel and says, we have found him of whom? The law of Moses spoke about. Question. We never heard Moses speak about Jesus in the Old Testament. Where did Moses speak about Jesus? Because from Genesis to Malachi, the scriptures, there is not even a Bible verse that mentions the name Jesus as in J-E-S-U-S. So, Philip and Nathaniel, please talk to us. When you say you have found him of whom Moses spoke about, how did you know that this is the him? That he was speaking about. Because he never mentioned about Jesus. But Moses, because he was a natural man, he spoke about Jesus in typology, in shadows. We start off in Genesis. The tree that was in the garden. That was Jesus. Because it says, I am the tree of life. I am not that I... I am the tree of life. The bread that they ate... The manner that they ate, it was communicating Jesus. Noah, the ark, it was Jesus in typology. They that entered the ark, they were preserved. But the ones that rejected, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The ones that believed in the message of Noah that entered the ark, they were preserved. The ones that rejected the message of Noah, which is the message of Christ, they, they were condemned. So, when, Mo, when Philip is saying, we have found him, he is referring to the one that Moses spoke about in shadows. The brazen serpent on a pole. It was not a brazen serpent on a pole, but it was Christ that was being communicated. The blood on the doorpost. It was not the blood literal on the doorpost. It was Christ being communicated. The, the, the Lamb of God, the, 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 Isaac, when he was put, when he was taken to Mount Moriah by Abraham, that was symbolic because there was a lamp that was caught in the thicket. That lamp was Jesus. So Moses was communicating Christ but in typology. So Philip says, Philip findeth Nathaniel and said, we have found him. There are many people that have not found him, but they are calling on the name of Jesus, but they don't know him. Is this not the same Jesus that went to his own church in Laodicea in the book of Revelation and says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. It was Jesus that went to his own church. He was knocking that he may enter into his own church. But the church already were already worshipping. Oh, God is in this place. Oh, the presence of God is in this place. Protocol were on the doors. Not allowing the owner of the church to come in. There are many that are calling on the name of Jesus. But they don't know Jesus. 
It is a whom that you ought to find. The Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Whom the Son, whom it's the whom, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I am here to announce to you that Jesus is more than enough. When you have found him, you have found everything. When you have found him, you have found the anointing. Why? Because the Jesus Christ, Christos, is the anointing. It, anointed and his anointing so when you have received jesus you have received the anointing and his anointing you have received the anointed and his anointing when you have found jesus you have found everything in the old testament they used shadows they used oil because jesus had not been made manifest according to john chapter 1 verse 14 and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us and we have beheld his glory like no other now watch this so in the old testament they would use shadows they would use manna it which was symbolic of them communicating christ but the reason that jesus became flesh and dwelt amongst us we don't need shadows anymore we have found him romans chapter 10 romans chapter 10 verse 14 god punished the devil romans chapter 10 verse 14 to 15 Romans 10, 14 to 15. How then will they call on him in whom? In whom they have not believed. And how are they to believe? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have not heard? Zakip Parosa. Hey, Basata. Watch this. How, will, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? So I'm preaching that you may know him, not it. You may know him. Zabra do honte gija la bahada. Branoski taya taya. Zene ne giasuja la bahata. Oh, God punished the devil. The devil is being punished today. Now watch this. And how are they to preach unless they are sent? How are they to preach unless they are sent? So you have to be sent. You have to be sent. How will they preach unless they are sent? It's the same thing. Watch this. It's the same thing. Okay, let me speak to Pastor Mchango because what I'm saying, it, 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 um, it might make sense to her. It's the same with Pastor Mchango right now. Yeah, she's watching. The Bible says, how will they preach unless they are sent? Now watch this. Watch this. The same thing that the vision that Pastor Mchangwa received of her assignment, this is back dating to 1996 when God visited, visited you. There was a manifestation of the presence of God. Even though it was not as clear, this is 96. Your calling is not like you just start ministry two days ago. No. The vision God gave you, it was 96. But watch this. The vision that God gave you, he gave you in a shadow. Let me explain this. <laughs> you received the vision in 96. But the vision was in a shadow. How do I mean? Because of the shadow, pay attention, pay attention. You received a vision, but it was in a shadow. In your vision, God was communicating the relationship that he wants with us, his children. And he used marriage he used marriage. Pay attention, Pastor Mchangwa. This, this will change the, dy the dynamics of everything that you're doing. Because things are about to change in your ministry. God used relationship. He used marriage. He used marriage. Communicating the relationship that he wants with us, his children. So from there now, 
You took it upon yourself. This is why you see that you have more grace in counseling of marriages. Yet it was God that was communicating that in a shadow. So here is what you are going to do. You are not going to stop counseling that you are doing for couples. By the way, there is a couple that you helped. I think it must have been early 2098-99. There is a couple that you helped. But this couple seems to have forgotten that their marriage was on the verge of breaking. You helped them. You assisted them. You spoke to them. This is 98-99, getting into 2000. But I'm here to announce to you that God is going to bring them into remembrance and they will remember you. I'm speaking 96, the vision you received, it, but it was in a shadow. And it was more to do with marriages, couples, bringing them together. Yet God was communicating about you preaching the gospel, bringing people back to the father, the bride and the groom. Yet it was in a shadow. So your calling is not a yesterday calling. It's backdated to 96 when you receive the vision. Now, the Bible now is saying, how then can they go unless they have been sent? How can they go unless they have been sent? So there are people like you, the pastor Mchangwas, that have been sent by God. So I want you to break, I want you to break the box that you are in. Forget just marriages only. Forget it. There is more that God has installed, bestowed, or invested in you. You are God's investment. Break that box. It is not just couples that you are going to be dealing with. It is us that you are going to be preaching to, that we are reconnected to the Father. You are going to preach this gospel. Marriage, you still do it. Couples will still be coming. Oh, God. Anyway, let me leave that. Let's go back to John, uh, Re Re Revelation, uh, Romans chapter 10. Today is back-to-back -back punishment of the devil. Pastor Mchangwa, your calling is not a small, small calling. Don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. How then will they call on him in whom they have not yet? Is, did you hear that? On whom? On whom? So it is a whom, not it, a whom. So the gospel is about a whom. The gospel is about a him. The gospel is about a person. Hence, Jesus said, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. But the scriptures, they are there that rally behind me. They testify of me. I am the reason of the writings. So the gospel is about a whom. The gospel is about a him. The gospel is about a person. It's not about it. It's not about bread, wine, ribina, holy water, salt. It's not about that. The gospel is about a person. Uh, so watch this. Watch this. Uh, zibra no honda ya baskia. Ah, Pastor Mchanga said it's true. He said, thank God my husband is hearing. Ah, husband is hearing. It was in the same year, that same year, that 96, 97. I think we, you met with your, with your ogre. You're still young. <laughs> <laughs> husband that woman you are with there is too much grace there is, God has invested so much in her <laughs> so the Bible is about a whom the Bible is about a him the Bible is about a person so thou from a child you have been acquainted to holy scriptures who, who, which are able to make thee wise in the subject matter of salvation. So the scriptures there are profitable of philemos in the subject matter of salvation. It's not about business. It's not about how to make it. It's not about finance. The Bible is not about finance. 
If you want to know about finance, go to a finance college. If you want to know about agriculture, go to an agriculture college. And then you learn about agriculture. Just because the Bible talks about a seed, that seed is not talking about money or talking about seed that you go and plant. It was referring to a person. The Bible is about a him. Even though he was communicated in shadows and in types, it is about a him. You search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. But the scriptures, they are there that testify of me. Pastor K, my pastor, it is good to see you. Ah, yeah, 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 Pastor K, it's good to see you. You know, every time I, I see you, I, I feel like saying, Heva Prona. <laughs> We've come a long way. And we are going a long way. Praise God. Apostle Tembo, it is good to see you. Now watch this. Pay attention to what I'm about to say. What I'm about to say will change everything that you have ever been taught. The reason for Bible study is for you to relearn, unlearn, relearn, and unlearn, and unlearn. Because you don't want to be the, the foolish Galatians who have been bewitched. Now watch this. <clears throat> watch this. Now pay attention. So deception. Deception is not deception without an element of truth. Haba. Deception is not deception unless there is an element of truth. So, where is the deception coming from? Remember, he said, how is it that you are so foolish that you began in the spirit, now you are being perfected in the flesh? So, where deception comes in, there is an element of truth that, oh, God is about to do this in your life. All right? Then the element of deception comes in, but you have to sow a seed. So they will say the, a, 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 the truth and then deception, then there ought to be an element of lying. There is an anointing upon my head, but you have to sow a seed if you want to tap into this anointing. Today, I'm going to punish the devil back to back. Today, back to back. So deception is not deception unless there is an element of truth. There are many messages that sound like the gospel, but not the gospel. It sounds like it, but it is not the gospel. What is the gospel? The message of his death, his burial, and his resurrection. That is the message. Listen, the reason why Jesus came, I want you to understand this. From Genesis, when God introduced Christ, the plan for redemption in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form. To ho, ho The earth was nothing, nothing. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and God commanded light. That light was a person, because we see the light in verse number 6, the firmament. But that light, when God said, light be, that was Jesus, who is the light of the world. Because remember, God is the father of lights. That's why the Bible says, you are the light of the world, a city that is set upon a hill that cannot be hid. So the introduction of the light in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 was Christ, he said, light be. In the original it says, Bereshit Elohim barat eta shemines, letter aret. God say, commanded light be, that was Christ. That was the, that was the plan for redemption. The same light shines out of darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. That was light, that was Christ. So that was the introduction of the him of whom Philip and Nathaniel said, we have found him. He has to be found. Many people are still in bondage right now because they have not found him. They have found it. Moving around with uh, sand in your Gucci handbags. Hey, women, hey, 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 with your Louis Vuitton, you have, you have become a medical, no, not a medical, no, you have become a native doctor, you have, you have oil of Judah, oil of fast fruit, oil of um, promotion, oil of speed, in one Gucci bag, 
We are looking at the woman and say, hey, look at the handbag. Nice. Not knowing that you are a native doctor. In there you have salt, you have stones, you have oils, all kinds, red oil, blue oil, green oil, engine oil. In that handbag, that Gucci handbag, you've become a native doctor. Yet you're still raising your hands and say, Jesus. Question is, which Jesus are you calling on to? Are you still here or you have just gone? Now watch this. Watch this. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 1, verse number 7. God punished the devil. Galatians chapter 1, verse number 7. Galatians chapter 1, verse number 7. The Bible says, not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you, who want to distort the gospel of Christ. There are some that distort, that are troubling you. Who want to distort the gospel of Christ? There are some. So another gospel, what does it do? Another gospel removes you from grace to works. Another gospel removes you from grace to works. So now here's the thing. You are asking, thank you for asking this question. But then how do I know that this is not another gospel? It's another gospel, not the gospel. It is in the tenses. Another gospel will remove grace and apply works. Another gospel will tell you that God will do. But the gospel says God has blessed us. God has redeemed us. God has loved us. God has, has past tense. Another gospel is for God to move in your life. So a Isaac, a sacrificial seed, that's another gospel. It is in the tenses. So deception is not deception until there is a, 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 an element of truth. They will put God in it. But then they introduce works. You have to do this for God to do that. Another gospel. It removes you from grace to works. Now this is why many people you boast. Yeah, God has to do something. Hey, Amen. I've been praying and fasting. Oh my God, I've been fasting and for 20 days. I've been fasting. Works. God has to do something. Listen, God is not moved by your fasting. God is not moved by anything that you do. God is moved by himself. God is moved by his son. What his son did on Calvary. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. That is the only thing that moves God. Now watch where you come in. The fact that you are in him. You are in Christ. So when God is looking for Hillary, he does not look for Hillary. He looks for his son in Hillary. What moves? That's why in, in, on the day of transfiguration, Moses was there. Elijah, no, Moses appeared. Elijah appeared. And uh, Jesus was there. And they said, let us build three tabernacles. For one for Moses, one for Elijah, and all that. And then Moses was like, eh, 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 eh. Before you even start off this, your, your building thing here. Because I know the next thing you're going to say, we need to raise, we need money for the building, for the tabernacles. <laughs> so before you start doing this, your building, eh, eh, I am not the message. I was speaking, this is why I say to you, the one that shall come after me, hear ye him, the one that will come. This is Moses. And Elijah, uh, and the prophet said, eh, 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 eh. Mm. I am not the one. Oh, I beg. My message was, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? So forget it. So before they were still even negotiating that who is going to stay, who is going to build, the Bible says, and the voice came from heaven. That this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Question. If you are born again, where is the beloved son? In your inside. So when God is looking at you, Martin, God is looking 
at his beloved son that is in you so when god says i am well pleased he is looking at you martin but he is not seeing you he's seen his son in you hence paul will say i was crucified with christ nevertheless i live not i but christ that lives in me so what would move god is not what you do it's not your works because your works could not even do anything hence they could not meet up with the demands of sin hence they kept on killing animal after animal animal after animal and god was still not pleased but he became a man to die for men so god moved so before all this is so if you are thinking that you come to god so that you will make it you're lying to yourself you've been deceived because before Jesus came, the people were making it. You had people like Solomon. You had people like Queen Sheba. People that had wealth. Not all these, your small, small change. But still, there was something that they could not pay for themselves. Even their money could not. This is why this message of come to our church, you will make it. This message, that's why it's rejected by those that are wealthy. Come to our church, you receive healing. That's why this message is not received by those that are in good health. Because they are saying, there's no need for me to come because I'm in good health. There's no need for me to come because I've got the money. This message, this prosperity gospel has made those that are influenced, affluence, not come to listen to your message. Because that's why they have said that the gospel is a pigment in the poor man's head. Because of the bewitching that is taking place within the pulpits. Who has bewitched you? The gospel should affect everybody. You should never preach a gospel that only affects people in Africa. You should never preach a gospel that only affects people in Asia. There are certain messages that you can't preach them here. There are certain messages you can't preach in America. You can't just come to here and start saying, there's a witch here, there's a witch there. Uh, uh, people will be like, hey, Oga, now this is not Africa. Oh. That's what they'll say. Because your message is tailor-made. But the message should be universal. It should affect the ones with money, the ones without money, the ones without in good health, the ones not in good health. That is the message because that is the reason why Jesus came. He came and he died for our sins that we may have life. He came, he gave us his life. It was substitutionary. Where you were meant to be crucified, Martin, God removed you and he put himself. He said, you cannot crucify my son, Martin. You cannot crucify my daughter, Yvonne. I will take their place substitutionary when abraham was about to sacrifice his son isaac on mount moriah the bible says a voice came from heaven said remove that isaac he's not the one but behold there is a ram that is caught in the thicket that ram is the one that will die for you that was a communication of god communicating to abraham that i god i will die for my people you don't have what it takes to die for them because it, the, the, for your sins to be forgiven, remember in the Old Testament, an animal will be looked at and see if there was no fault. That Jesus comes, ye who knew no sin. There was no sin found in him. Are you here? Or you have disappeared. This is back-to-back -back punishment of the devil. So another gospel will remove you from grace and will bring you to works. Look at verse number 8 of the same book. God punished the devil. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel that is contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. Even an angel. We say, oh, there's an angel. The angel of the Lord came and he was speaking to me and he said, this is what we have to do. And then this is it. This is it. And if it is contrary to the word of God, I, let that angel be accursed. Or be it any man. That means a man of God can go astray. Hello? This is Paul speaking. He said, even if I, this is Paul speaking, even if I would preach another gospel that we did not preach, what was the gospel? What was the content of the gospel? The death, the burial, and the resurrection. If you believe in him, that he died, he was buried, he rose on the third day. That is the gospel. That is the gospel that saves. The gospel of hellfire is not a gospel that saves. Jesus never said, go and preach about hellfire. There's no verse in the Bible. It says, go and tell my people of hellfire. There's never. 
He said, go and tell them that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. So the gospel of hellfire, all those that have believed because of hellfire, you are fake convicts. You are fake believers. Because you came to Christ because you are afraid. This is why you are seeing a lot of people are coming to Christ because of poverty. A lot of people are coming to Christ because of sickness. False convicts. False. You need to be born again. You are not born again. You think you are born again. You are not. So the gospel can drift. So a man of God can start off well. Starts off well. And he can drift. I've seen a lot that have drifted. My duty is to continue to pray for them that, Lord, let them come back to repentance. A change of mind. Jesus. Do you know that Jesus does not preach the gospel? Do you know that Jesus, he did not preach the gospel? Do you know that? He does not preach. Jesus does not preach the gospel. Watch this. I'm about to shock you. I want to shock you while punishing the devil at the same time. Is that fair? Yes, it is. <laughs> Acts chapter 9. Acts 9 verse 3 to 6. Acts chapter 9 verse 3 to 6. The Bible says, Now, he, now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying, Soul, 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 why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Remember, pay attention. This is Saul, who later became Apostle Paul. But I want you to understand, already there, there's a message there. He was Saul of Tarsus. When he got born again, the Bible says in the book of Corinthians, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So Paul is a typical example of what it means when it says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Paul, he was Saul of Tarsus. He was persecuting the church, killing people in the church. Many people became widows, widowers, orphans because of Paul. But after he met with him, him, not it, after he met with him, there was a change. So now he then became Apostle Paul. And he went to the same church where he was persecuting. And he came and he says, hey, we have done no harm to you. Ah, Paul, Oga, is it not you just yesterday you were so you were persecuting us? But because if any man be in Christ... He's a new creature and all things have passed away. Now, let's go back to our verse. And it says, now as he went on his way to Damascus, he approached, he, uh, he approached Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. And falling to, his and to the ground, he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting? And he said, who are you, Lord? Already there, he's not talking about Lord as in the risen Lord. Please pay attention. Because Paul did not know him. So Paul, because of his status, the level that Paul was in Nigeria, they'll say Paul was an Odogu. He was a big man. Remember, he was a, a Hebrew of Hebrews. This is Paul. So he was known. So when he says Lord, he had to bow down to something that made him fall. He was not referring to Lord as in the risen Lord. He was referring to Lord something that is higher than him. There was nothing that would make him to fall, to bow down. So he said, Lord. Okay. Timothy, it is good to see you. Now watch this. And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus of whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city and you will be told what you are to do. Jesus did not say, right, yeah, you are persecuting me. Wait, wait, let me preach the gospel to you. Uh -uh. Jesus said, I am the one you are persecuting. But anyway, I will not preach the gospel to you. 
I have given the mandate to Yvonne. I have given the mandate to Timothy. I have given the mandate to Florence. I have given the mandate to Martin. I have given you the mandate. Go ye therefore and preach this gospel. So he says, now go. You will meet a man, Ananias. He is the one that will preach the gospel to you. I will not preach to you. I have given you authority. I have given you the mandate. You go and preach. So as powerful as Paul was, whoever would make him fall must be a Lord. So Jesus sent him to Ananias to preach to him. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. God punished the devil. Galatians chapter 5 verse number 1. Galatians chapter 5. Listen, this is just preparation of the Jesus store. Get ready. We are coming to your city. This movement, mm, it will be city after city. Preaching the undiluted message of Jesus Christ. And people will know Jesus for who he is. Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 verse number 1. Watch this. The Bible says, For freedom Christ has set us free. Has set us free. Past tense. Has set us. Not will. Has set us free. Stand firm therefore and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Stand firm. Do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. How do you submit to the yoke of slavery? Through deception. By you being bewitched. Being taken from an, uh, the gospel to another gospel. A gospel that removes you from grace to works. You are now being put back in the yoke, in the bondage of the enemy. Watch this. So another gospel changes the tenses. So it's Christ another gospel it's christ is not enough you need oil christ is not enough you need salt christ is not enough you need sand christ is not enough you need grass this is why people are eating grass because another gospel will tell you that christ is not enough you need works you need oil you need salts you need stones you need grass you need sand Listen, I've been there. I've been there. There was a time, let me give you my testimony, so that you, you don't think that I'm just coming up here, guns blazing on the devil. I'm punishing the devil, by the way. I'm not punishing anyone. It's the devil that I'm punishing. I remember there was a time my wife was not well. I called my, my sister back home. Said, hey, things are not well. Said, no, don't worry. I'm going to see a man of God where he normally prays, where he stands. I will get sand from there and I'll send it to you. So you put that sand in water. I've been there. Sand was sent via DHL. <laughs> DHL brought sand from Africa to Europe. DHL brought sand where a man of god used to stand i remember one time we took this sand ha ah, put it in water i said we have to drink this and and then i asked what do i have to say I said the god of my father <laughs> hey. i'm not saying of things that i don't know of i'm talking of things that i have done i've been there Listen, I've been serving in ministry for over 20 years. Serving men of God. Serving. Serving them. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not a fly by night, by the way. If you think that I just came up, say, oh yeah, this is Facebook. Ah. <laughs> Don't let anybody lie to you. I'm not a fly by. 20 years, serving. It's not a joke. Serving. Being in Elisha, washing the hands of Elijah for 20 years. So I'm not a flyby. I'm not a fly by night. Sand was sent from Africa to Europe, where the men of God will stand. Deception. It was all in the name of God who deliver you. But he needs sand. Ha! 
another gospel. Jesus plus sand. I've been there. Jesus plus oils. Jesus plus souls. It's another gospel. It changes the tenses. Now look at 1 Corinthians. God punished the devil. 1 Corinthians. So I'm not talking of things that I don't know of. I am talking of things that I know of. And I've, there are people that I've even told you need to get oil. You need to do this. You need to get uh, this oil. Put it. Mix it. Take water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've told people these things. But when my eyes of understanding were enlightened. Ha, ha, ba. Freedom came. You shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. I have known him. I've been set free. I've been set free. Imagine that sand I was drinking. It would have clogged my intestines. Souls that were eating. Oils that were drinking. Grass that were eating. All in the name of deliverance. Ronnie Mitchell said, I'm not, I'm not surprised you are not on a plane to Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> now watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3 to 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3 to 5. Jesus Christ and him crucified. Okay, this is Paul. Let's look at the pretexts. I like pretexts. I like pretext. The Bible says, And when I came to you, brothers, I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing except Christ, Jesus Christ and him crucified. This is Paul speaking to the church in Corinth. said, when I came to you, I desired to know nothing. I did not come here to know about your Gucci shoes, your Gucci bag, your Gucci. I did not want to know about that. When I came to you, I did not want to know about your new jet. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you buying your jet. But when I came to you, I did not want to know about that. But I wanted to know about Christ and him crucified because that is the message that saves i did not want to know anything i did not come to you with enticing words but i wanted to know about jesus christ and him crucified and i was with you in in weakness and in fear much trembling and my speech and my message are not a pleasurable words of wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of the power so your faith should not rest in symbols. Your faith should not rest in shadows. Meaning, your faith should not rest in oils. Your faith should not rest in souls. Your faith should not rest in mantles. Your faith should rest in a person who is Christ. The Bible says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word who is the word in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god so faith comes by hearing the word who is the word god is the word the same god that was in the beginning when the bible says bereshit elohim barat eta shemines letter are it in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form the earth was without form to hoboho there was nothing, nothing. And God commanded light out of the, that same word. In John chapter 1 verse number 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And the Bible is telling you that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. The word is a person. That means faith cometh by hearing Christ. That means your faith should rest in Christ, not in shadows, not in types. This is why many people, your faith rests on your purpose. That's why when your papa goes astray, even you, you're affected for life. Hey, my, my man of God, my Moses, my, hey, my, your faith is resting. This is why you're not seeing the manifestation. The Bible declares and it says, I feel like preaching right about now. The Bible declares and it says, you have made the word of God of none effect by the traditions of men. So your faith is resting in traditions. I remember there were times that I could not even go anywhere without applying anointing oil on my face. I said, oh, I'm going for an interview. I take salt, put it under my tongue. I take, oh, I, I'm going for an interview. I take oil. I put it my, on my eyes. I said, they will see me. The moment they see me, my eyes will, hey, my eyes. My faith was resting on symbols. My faith 
Yet your faith should not rest in symbols, but it should rest in the power of God. For Paul says, I, I, boy, I love brother Paul, says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ Jesus, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Remember, the whole Bible is about salvation. It's not about how to make it. It's not about uh, a business. It's not about agriculture. It's not about science. It's about a person. It's about salvation. That's why you see that in Genesis, when God introduced the redemptive plan for salvation, it was in Genesis. From there, the message kept going on. Luke 24, when Jesus is on his way to Emmaus, he meets up with his two disciples that were discussing about his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Then Jesus drew closer and said, what are you guys talking about? And they said, have you not heard about Jesus who died the death of a Mattia? The death of Jesus was not a Mattia dome because a Mattia is a good guy. Jesus did not die a death of a good guy. He died the death of a criminal, which was substitutionary. The criminal there was you, but it was substitutionary. Jesus took your place that you may have his life. So he was disgusted. Said, and then he says, all fools of slow of heart to have believed all that the prophets have spoken. That means it's not everything that the prophets spoke that you should have believed. What you should have believed is this. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and enter into his glory? And then the Bible says, beginning at Moses and in all the prophets, he began to expound to them the things concerning himself, himself. So the message of Christ is about a person, him, and your faith should rest in him, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Your faith should not rest in symbols. Your faith should rest in a person who is Christ Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I feel like I'm preaching way better than your amen. God punish the devil. I told you it's back to back today. Back to back punishment. God punish the devil. We are preparing for the Jesus tour. Oh God, hey, you, you ain't seen nothing yet. There's this guy, Nigerian, Nigerian comedian. Yeah. You say, you ain't seen nothing yet. You know what I'm saying? Get out of here. <laughs> Yay. I know someone said, oh, but you can't say that. Yeah. Don't be too spiritual. As if you don't watch that guy. <laughs> you watch him. You even have his video on, in your phone. You send it on your WhatsApp groups. When it says, get out of here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't be too spiritual. Even Jesus would joke with his disciples. Yeah. God. Imagine God. He's humorous. If God can create a chimpanzee. <laughs> so your faith should not rest in symbols and in shadows. So the gospel... Another gospel removes you from grace to works. So another gospel will tell you that you, for you to tap into my anointing, you have to sow a seed. That's another gospel. That's a perverted gospel. Sow into my anointing. You want the grace upon my life? Sow into my anointing. For this grace. There's a grace here. You need to sow a seed into my anointing. Now let me punish the devil. That is a perverted gospel. That is a doctrine of Simon. How do I know that? Acts chapter 8 verse 20. I want to punish the devil back to back. Acts chapter 8. God punish the devil. Acts chapter 8 verse 20. Today is back to back. Acts chapter 8 verse number 20. But Peter said to him, May your silver pretext. Let's go back. Now when the disciples, apostles um, at Jerusalem heard in Samaria that they had received the power of God. This is verse 14, all right? For those that want uh, the scriptures. Acts chapter 8, verse number 14. Yeah? So that we understand the pretext. I'm about to close. That's why we are, I'm, I'm rushing. <clears throat> now when the apostles heard at Jerusalem heard that the Samaria had received the power of God, they sent them Peter and John who came and prayed for them that they may receive the Holy Spirit for he had not yet fallen on them did you hear that he had not yet he did not say it he did not say it had not he a person he had not fallen on them 
but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw the Spirit was given through the laying on of the hands of the apostles, he offered them money. This is where the doctrine of Simon came from. You want to tap into my anointing, sow a seed. There is a, there is a, there is a grace. The prophetic is here. You need to sow a seed to tap into the prophetic. That is a doctrine of Simon Magus. God punished the devil. Listen to this. And then he says, Now when Simon saw that the spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, so that anyone who, on whom I will lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. What did Peter say? But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me slow down here. Let me slow down. I, I need to slow down because I really need to punish the devil. Simon Magus, he saw that when the apostles laid their hands, the Holy Ghost was made manifest. The Holy Ghost was made manifest. All right? So when the Holy Ghost was made manifest, when Simon was watching this, Simon then said, Ah! <laughs> Hey, let me give you money that you give me this power. This is where the doctrine of Simon, the perverted gospel that was introduced in the church, hence the Galatians were bewitched. You want the prophetic, you need to sow a seed. Because they think that the gifts of God are given, are purchased rather with money. The gifts are not purchased with money. So anyone that says you need to step or sow a seed for the prophetic, it's a perverted gospel. He is a son or a descendant of Simon Magus. He is from the loins of Simon Magus perverted gospel another gospel that sounds like another yet it is not deception at the highest the gifts of god are not purchased with money he has freely given you the gifts upon salvation the holy spirit who is the giver of gifts he has given you the gifts, the gifts of prophecy, the gifts of interpretation, the gifts of working of miracles, the gifts of healing. They are all inside a believer. So you don't sow a seed for the prophetic. You don't sow a seed for the gifts that God gave you upon his death, his burial, and his resurrection. He paid the price. He was the sacrifice for you to have obtained these gifts. And you are there. The descendant of Simon Magus making people to sow seeds of what the Holy Ghost has given freely. Perverted gospel. That's another gospel. God punish the devil from today. You will not sow a seed for the prophetic. You will not sow a seed for healing power. You will not sow a seed for any gift that God has given freely. He was the sacrifice. He paid with his own blood, his own life for you to have received because it was upon his death, his burial, and his resurrection. That is when the Holy Spirit was given unto you. Who is the giver of gifts? All the gifts of the Spirit are in your inside. There is no seed that you can sow. You cannot purchase the gifts of God. Any man, any woman that will tell you that there is an anointing here. You need to sow a seed for this anointing. You need to sow a seed for the prophetic. He is a descendant of Simon Magus. May God punish the devil. It's back to back. Punishing the devil. I'm not joking with the devil. I've been there. Telling people to sow seeds of what they already have. Said, yeah, there's the, the, the anointing, yeah, yeah, the prophetic that is upon me. I want that to, uh, you know, I want that to come on you. So, um, <clears throat> you need to sow a seed that will move God. <laughs> hey, one on one with the men of God, impartation with the men of God, one on one, you are paying thousand. 
one on one. God punished the devil. The gifts of God are not purchased with money. The moment you start putting money, mammon, with the gifts of God, ha! You not only have you drifted from the gospel. I don't know what you have done. I don't know. Man of God out there, I beseech you by the message of God. The gifts of God are not for sale. Power conference. Sow seeds to receive power. I have power that I want to give you to receive. I beseech you men of God and women of God. I love you so dearly and I thank God for the labor that you are doing within the body of Christ. But I plead with you. Stop bewitching the people that God died for. Bought with a price. Rejoice, it is good to see you. Ah, my premier, it is good to see you. Chowdhury, it is good to see you. God bless you. So you don't tap. You hear somebody says you need to tap into the. You need to sow a seed to tap into the next level. <sighs> Let me punish the devil for two seconds. Yeah, there are people here watching. Uh, you want to go to the next level. I want you to sow a seed to go to the next level. Perverted gospel. Deception at the highest. There is no, there is no next, next level. There is no next level. Watch this. <laughs> Let me show you something. You need to tap into the next. You need to sow a seed to tap into the next level. Now watch this. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. Ephesians chapter 2 verse number 6. Ephesians chapter 2 verse number 6. Okay. Pretext. Let's look at pretext. Verse number 4. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us. Listen to the tenses. He loved us. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us, made us alive together with Christ by grace now watch this you have been saved by grace you have been saved now watch this and he raised us up with him and seated us up with him in the heavenly places in christ jesus so if you are in christ you are in the highest level there's no other level above christ there's no other level above christ but the question that you're asking is how how then can i begin to operate Philemon chapter 1 verse number 6, the Bible declares and it says, Let the sharing of your faith become effectual, effective, by acknowledging every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. So how do you go to the so-called next level or manifestation? It is you acknowledging. Otherwise, there is no other next level. So sow a seed for the next level. The anointing for next level. There is no next level. If you are in Christ, you are in the highest level. We are seated in the heavenlies, far above principalities. We are far above principalities. We are far above babalaus. We are far above witchcraft. We are far above wizards. We are far above. That is the highest level. So there is no sow a seed for the next level. What next level? There is no other level except Christ. Christ is the highest level. Another gospel, another gospel makes you greedy and not be content. Another gospel makes you greedy and not content. I want more of you. 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 If you want more of him, be born again because he gave you all of him. Hi. Why? You are greedy. said, I want more of you. More, 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 more. Uh -uh. He has given you all of him. God resides in you. How, how do you want more of him? He is in you. Boy, could so it is good to see you. He is, you have all of God in your inside. All of God in your inside. And you're saying, I want more of you. I want more of you. Jesus, 
you uh, be born again. You have received all of God. All of God resides in your inside. That's why the Bible says, in him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. That means everything that is in God, everything that makes God, God is in your inside. Everything that makes God, God is in your inside. But you're still looking, I want more of you. More anointing. More anointing from where? More anointing from where? You have all of God. <sighs> God resides in you. But you're saying you want more of God. No. What you need is you want to grow in knowledge. You grow in knowledge. So when you grow in knowledge, as you grow in knowledge, there will be manifestations because you are being exposed to other things you did not know about yourself because as he is so are we so when christ is revealed the believer is revealed so when christ is unveiled the believer is revealed so another gospel makes you think you need more anointing another gospel makes you think that you need more power yet he gave you himself look at matthew 6 verse 33 then i close matthew 6 33 god punished the devil Matthew 6, <clears throat> Matthew 6, 33, Matthew 6, 33, the Bible says what? But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added right. Let me rightly divide that so that you don't get too much confused. That word, seek ye first, that first there is not first, second, third, fourth. That word first is in the original, it means only. Seek he only seek god only so it's not seek ye first second third mm -mm. it's seek ye only seek ye only let's let's read it uh, together he said seek first that first does not mean first second third it means seek only only the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. Seek only the kingdom. And all these things shall be added. L remember, you are a career of everything in Christ. You are a career of everything that is in Christ. You are a career of everything that is in Christ. Now, Timothy, Second Timothy. I had said I want to close, but I feel like I need to punish the devil. Let me push this thing a little bit more. 2 Timothy, <clears throat> chapter 1, verse 9. 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 9. The Bible says, Who saved us? Who called us to a holy calling? Not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. Every child of God is called. Did you see the tenses of the gospel? Who saved us? Who called us to a holy calling, not because of our works. Remember, your calling is not because of works, but it's because of grace. It's not because of your works, it's because of grace. So every child of God is called. Every child of God is called. Whether you feel it or you don't feel it, guess what? It's not a feeling. It's a knowing. Every child of God is called. Now pay attention. This is where the drama is. This is where the problem is. Are you here? Pay attention. <laughs> this is where the drama is. This is where we are seeing many bewitchers. Now watch this. So when God calls you, you answer the call by coming. Okay? Ah, this is this is some deep stuff. When God calls you, I like uh, Ronnie saying. Now I, I I I wait, I wait like Paul. There is something that you you caught something, Ronnie. There you caught something. You caught what I'm about to say. You caught it. <laughs> you caught it. Ronnie caught it. Now watch this. When God calls you, you you answer the call 
by coming. You don't answer the call by starting. <laughs> ah, Mary, it is good to see you. I know South Africa is in the building. It's good to see you. I miss you guys so much. I'm still waiting for our call, Mary. I'm still waiting. You're a busy man. I spoke to your beautiful wife and uh, told her that Mary needs to get um, a secretary now. He's a busy man. <laughs> busy man. Now, watch this. What I'm about to say, it might not go, it might not sit well with a lot of people. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you the truth. Okay? Every child of God is called by God. So you answer the call by coming. You don't answer the call by starting. So first, God calls you to come, not to go. So many people, because you are called, the next thing is end time calling ministries. Mountain calling ministries. You are called. The first thing you do is you answer the call. You come. You are not called to go. The calling is not to start. That's why we have got a lot of people that they've been told you've got the call of God upon your life. The next thing started call of God Ministries International. Now they are coming now here. They, these are the same people that are coming. There's an anointing here. Sow a seed for this anointing. God is raising millionaires. I want you to sow a seed. 500. Reg, reg, register now. Register now. Register now. Register now. Oh, there's a move of God. Take a bottle of water. These are the people that were called by God. Yes, but the calling is not starting. The calling is coming. You come to God first. You come to God first. So the calling is not starting. Now watch this. So what, what is the calling? Oh God help me. I want to help some people here. <laughs> Eli, uh, Samai, it is good to see you. Pray for me, for my health. Please, South Africa. God bless you. I'll pray for you. I'll remember. I'll remember you. Let me just finish this and then um, I'll pray with you. I'll pray with you. I'll pray with you. I'll pray with you. Uh, Eli, uh, Samai, I'll pray with you. God bless you. Now watch this. So the calling, the calling is so that you can be equipped. Hence, God gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists. What for? For the equipping of the saints to do what? To do the work of ministry. So you are called. The next thing, be equipped. The next thing, then go. But most of you, your calling is your starting. Hence, that's why you come here, you preach nonsense. Telling people to sow seeds of what they already have. Telling people to eat grass. Telling people to eat oil, drink oil drink whatever eat sand i've been there i've i've eaten sand oh <laughs> i've eaten this sand oh i've eaten sand i've eaten grass no i didn't eat grass no grass was another level i didn't eat did not eat grass but i i ate salt i drank oil hey i remember some lady made me drink anointing oil haba she messed up my suit at one point she poured oil on my head. Said the oil that is coming on you is heavy. Madam, she poured the whole bottle of oil. Said you, you are anointed for greatness. And messed up my suit. Right now I can't even wear the suit. It's got oil stains. If I see that woman, that woman of God, she has to refund my... She has to... I, I don't... I, I no, let me, let me look for the right words. She has to replace my suit. That's all I want. Forget the oil, forget the... Mm -mm. She should replace, replace my suit. She poured a whole bottle of olive oil, cooking oil, over my head. All in the name of the anointing upon your life is healthy. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to the calling. Okay. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. These people have messed up. Oh, they've perverted the gospel. Hi. Now watch this. Mark chapter 6. 
Yes, we need that suit replaced. Yes, we need it replaced. God punish the devil. I want that suit replaced. I loved it. It's my suit. I worked hard for it. <laughs> Somebody just pours oil in the name of the anointing is heavy. Yet the anointing you have received abides in you forever. The anointing is a person. Yet I'm busy with the... Anyway. Right, let's go to Mark. Mark chapter 3. <clears throat> Mark chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. Okay. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those whom he desired. And they came to him. So the calling, the first thing is you come to him. The first thing is you come to him. The disciples, they stayed with him. He called them, they stayed with him. He equipped them, he called them apostles. He named them apostles so that they might be with him and might send them out to preach. So the first thing is he calls them, he equips them, and then he sends them out. So many people, they are called but their response to the calling is starting. Their response is starting. He calls them. He calls them. For them to be equipped. Then when they are equipped, he then sends them. He then sends them. So the call is to be with first be with him first so you understand the message first not preaching your pseudo gospel perverted gospel so you come to him you are equipped that you may understand the message because it is the message that brings life the message of the cross the death the burial and the resurrection it is the message that brings Life to somebody, salvation. So you have to understand the message because many people think they know the message. There are many messages out there and yet people don't know the message. So you come to him, then you are equipped, you know the message. When you know the message, when you are equipped, then you go out and preach the message. That's why people don't even know the message. You are called and already uh, you are starting. You are starting. Allow yourself to understand the message first before you go out there and uh, undress yourself in public. If you fail to embrace knowledge, ignorance will undress you in public. I am seeing a lot of ignorance all over the social media. This one is doing this, one is what? This one is saying, hey, hey, hey. Anyway, that's not my business. I'm not here for that. My business is to stick to what I'm preaching. That's it. So you have to come to him. So he calls you first. You are called. So everybody that is here, Anna, you're called. Yvonne, you're called. Everybody that is here, you're called by God. But the calling is not starting. Are we saying you don't have to start? No. You will start after you have understood the message. Be grounded first. When you understand the message, then you go. Paul, after he had his encounter with Ananias, when he received the message, the Bible says he spent three years in Arabia. Arabia, three years. Understanding the message. That's why Paul, the level of revelation that Paul has, he took time. That's why the Bible says, study to show thyself approved. That word study is budazo. Be diligent. He took time to study. So Jesus calls the disciples to him. Number one, he calls them to him that they may know him. When you know him, you will know what message to preach. Many people don't even know the message. Right now he said, what is the message? They don't know. You'll make it. Ten steps to success. You'll make it. Or God is moving you to another, another dimension. They don't even know the message. So the call is not go. The call is not go. Sit. Be grounded. Know him first. 
so that when you know him, you will preach about him. That's why the Bible says, the scriptures, they testify of me. The scriptures, they talk about me. So you, when you are preaching the gospel, you are preaching about him, not you. That's why Paul, when he went to the church in Corinth, he said, when I came to you, I desired to know nothing else except Christ crucified. I don't want to know anything else because I know nothing else but except Christ crucified because he is the message. He is the message. He is the message. So Jesus is more than enough. He is the message. Now watch this. I'm about to uh, close. Like really close. Second Corinthians. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse number 4. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse number 4. The Bible says, For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus, that one we than the one we proclaimed, or if ye receive a different spirit from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it readily. That put up with it readily does not mean you put up with it, you know, you know, no manage it. Mm -mm. Put up with it readily is that put a guard, chase them. So that means. There is another Jesus. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Do you know that there is another Jesus that comes with another spirit that is orchestrated by another gospel? It's in your Bible. We just read that in Corinthians. If anyone comes to you with another Jesus, so please pay attention if somebody says i pray for you in the name of jesus yeah 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 please before you say amen find out with jesus because there is another jesus that comes with another spirit that comes with another gospel because remember deception everybody said in the name of jesus 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 but the question is which jesus which Jesus? Because there is another Jesus with another spirit with another gospel. Now watch this. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse number 3. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse number 3. For the time is coming. Yeah? The time is coming. So another Jesus comes from a teaching. Another spirit comes from a teaching. Another, from another gospel. Now watch this. For the time is coming when the people will not endure sound doctrine. So sound doctrine has to be endured, not enjoyed. Okay? Teaching what their itching ears, they will, will accumulate for themselves. Teachers to suit their own passions. And will turn away from listening to the truth. Remember, the truth is a person, Jesus. And wander off in myths. They are wandering off in myths. So, another gospel, another Jesus, another spirit comes from a teaching. A teaching that their itching ears want to hear. God will make you, God will do this if you do that. That comes with another spirit, another Jesus, another teaching. I hope you're listening. That teaching, where their itching ears want to hear, is a teaching that reveals the spirit. It is a teaching that reveals the spirit. And my prayer for you, Oh, God, help me. My prayer for you this day. May God prepare you for the gospel. May God prepare you for the gospel. May God prepare you for his gospel. For his message, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. May God prepare you for that. And for those that are part and parcel of the Jesus store this month, may God continue to prepare you for this assignment that is ahead of you.
And I'm appealing to men and women of God out there to rally behind the Jesus tour. Let's go to every city. Let's preach the gospel of Christ Jesus. Many people are in bondage. Many people are in confusion because they don't know the message because there are too many messages. I'm appealing to every man and every woman of God. Let us rally behind preaching the undiluted message of Christ Jesus. I appeal to you. Let us preach the gospel that saves the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. It's an appeal. If you are in any city and you want to be part of the Jesus store, please. I think we'll have um, the Jesus store uh, page not long from now. You will see it. You reach out there. We'll come to any city. And we want you to be part of that city. We want you to go and then preach the gospel of Christ Jesus. We want to spread the blue marble with the fragrance of Christ. From nation to nation. From valley to valley. From valley to from mountain to valley. The message of Christ should be preached. From coast to coast. City to city. Village to village. Forget all this, your nonsense that you hear that oh, you're not anointed for the village. You are anointed for the city, but you end up in a village. What a... That's a pseudo gospel. We are going to city after city. Home from home. Start off from where you are. Preach the message of Christ. Let somebody know that Jesus loves them so much. Let somebody know. You see, there is um, there is something about seeing Jesus, or there is something about you meeting up with Him, not it with Him. That makes materialistic things, whatever, lose value in your life. Watch this. Let me give you Luke. 19 then i close luke 19 and then i close i i truly close with luke chapter 19 okay because a bit of a read verse 1 to 10 i want you to understand that there is something about you meeting up with jesus that will make you lose appetite for materialistic things you lose appetite for for sin, you lose, you lose appetite. Watch this. Luke chapter 19. All right, are you there? Verse 1. Luke chapter 19. Verse 1 to 10. It's a bit of a read, but I know you are you're patient, you're students of the of the gospel. Listen to this. He entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacche Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was seeking to see who Jesus was. He was seeking to see who Jesus was. This is what we are doing. We are going from city to city for people to meet with Jesus. He was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not. Because he was a small in stature. So he ran ahead and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him who he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry up, come down, for I must stay at your house today. Remember, this is Jesus is still communicating something there. Zacchaeus, come down. I must stay at your house today. That means there is somebody that Jesus is coming to your house today. Upon you receiving him as Lord and personal Savior. 
receiving life, he will come into your house today. Oh, God, help me. Help me. Uh, okay, let me leave that for another day. I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. When they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone into, he has gone in to be a guest of a man who is a sinner. Remember, Jesus came from this for the sinners. He did not came, come for those that are perfect. He came for the sinners. Pay attention. We're getting somewhere. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. There is something that happens to you when you really meet with Jesus. You lose appetite for money. You lose appetite for materialistic things. Am I saying there's anything wrong with them? There's nothing wrong with them, but you lose appetite for them. That means when you lose appetite for money, you will not manipulate the gospel because you're not preaching for money. There is something. There is something that happened in that story. Zacchaeus climbs the sycamore tree. Number one. I'll deal with the sycamore tree another day. And then God sees him on the sycamore tree. He said, come down, come down. I am coming to your house today. Meaning, the house that was being referred to now is the house to house the risen Lord. Know ye not that you are the temple. So God was already communicating to Zacchaeus that my intention is to come to your house, your body. He was communicating salvation. I am coming to your house. Because remember, he came for the sinner. That the sinner may have life. Because remember, separation took place in the garden in Eden. Eden means presence. It happened there. But the reason for Jesus coming was to restore that relationship between father and son. So he says to Zacchaeus, I am coming to your house. But everybody else did not understand. That's why they started grumbling. How can you say you're coming? How can you be sitting with the sinners? He came for the sinners. He came for the sinners. He came for Zacchaeus. But Zacchaeus, after he had an encounter with Jesus, as he came to the knowledge of Christ, his appetite for money, he lost it. When you meet with Jesus, material things, they lose value. When you meet with Jesus, your money will have a mission for ministry. It is not that oh, I have money, I want to buy a new... I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you buying nice stuff and nice things and nice all. But when you know, with, when you come in contact with Jesus, I'm talking about the real Jesus, the one that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. The one that Philip find Nathaniel and said, we have found him. When you meet with him, you love for money. loses you lose the appetite your money becomes a money with a mission my beloved i pray that god will continue to enlighten you that you may come to this knowledge of truth you make to this knowledge of truth that jesus is more than enough